so for my first video, I'm going to synthesize some hydrogen gas, which is the first and lightest element on the periodic table. It is a highly flammable explosive gas, and therefore is hard to keep around. And so I'm going to create some on the spot with some hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid, which can be easily bought at the hardware store uh, for pool cleaning. Um, that's what uh, chlorinating a pool is just putting muriatic acid in it. So muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid is just dissociated hydrogen chloride in solution, which I've got in this Erlenmeyer flask. And then here I've got magnesium. You can use any uh, relatively reactive metal with a low electronegativity for this, but I like magnesium. This uh, you can purchase at REI or Walmart to start fires. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. You're going to have an ion switch reaction and um, gaseous hydrogen is going to bubble out of solution and I'm going to cap it and it's going to go up in here into this bubble trough where I'm going to capture it and then light it on fire. So I'm going to put in the magnesium and it's, as you can see, maybe you can see on the camera, it's very, very corroded. So it'll take a while for the reaction to start to really get going. Okay, you can start to see a few bubbles coming up, now more and more, and the gas is going to displace the water in the bubble trough, so you're going to start seeing water coming out of the bucket. isolated hydrogen gas in here with very slight impurities of hydrogen chloride gas and water vapor. I'm going to burn it, which is just mixing it with oxygen to form water in the form of vapor, and it'll also release a lot of heat. You hear that pop? That's hydrogen gas burning. So now in the next segment, I will show you another way to isolate hydrogen gas through electrolysis of water, which is essentially doing the exact opposite of what I just did here by burning it. So for the second method of making hydrogen gas, all you need is magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts, which you can obviously get at any drugstore, glass of water, and a 9-volt battery. You can also use a 12-volt battery but on a 9-volt battery, the electrodes are closer together, so it makes it more ideal. Um, so the way I'm going to make hydrogen this time is by taking water, H2O, running an electric current through it, which gives hydrogen the extra electrons it needs to fill its valence, and then it, it and oxygen bubble out of solution elementally. So you have little bubbles of hydrogen and little bubbles of oxygen bubbling out of solution. You need the Epsom salts because water is an okay conductor, but not really good conductor. And so you need something that will make it more conductive, but won't participate in the electrolysis reaction. If you use regular table salt, then you're going to also split that apart and you're going to get sodium metal and chlorine gas, which you don't want. So magnesium sulfate doesn't participate in the reaction, and all it does is increase the conductivity in water. So I'm just going to drop the battery in the water. And if you can see in the camera, 
bubbles are coming up. The one with more bubbles is hydrogen, and the one with less bubbles is oxygen. This is using up the battery very fast and uses a huge amount of energy. This is how hydrogen is created on a commercial scale. What may be of interest is that deuterium, a heavier isotope of hydrogen with an extra neutron, uh, when it forms water, then it's harder for it to get uh, split apart by electrolysis, and therefore, when you fully uh, split apart, let's say, this whole glass, what's left is a slightly higher concentration of deuterium oxide or deuterium wa or heavy water, and that's how they make, that's how they commercially make deuterium water, which is used mostly in nuclear reactors to moderate nuclear reactions. But here we've got elemental hydrogen and elemental oxygen coming out. This is too little for me to really burn, but it's still pretty cool.